Hello and welcome to the uh, remote team workload monitor. Um, this is, well, this was never really intended as a finished product. This was intended as a demo for what was possible because obviously all remote teams work differently. You're all trying to monitor different things. You're all trying to monitor uh, your staff differently and the workload and all the rest of it. Um, but as I was making something just to showcase what was possible, it kind of developed into this product. So I thought I'd sell it as a product. If if you do want exactly what this does, then by all means buy this one. But the whole intention of the spreadsheet was to show you what's possible because now with lots of teams working from home and people not necessarily in the same room doing the work, uh, there are kind of things, uh, needs as far as tasks and that kind of thing is concerned where, where you can all actually be on the same page. Now I know there's obviously things like Office 365 and that kind of thing where you can do this type of thing all together but there are sometimes I think uh, needs for act just to actually have a few tasks written down that you can distribute between employees and come back and you can see what they've been up to and that kind of thing so this might be useful it may not do the whole job as I said um, if you want something more bespoke get in touch but let me show you how this works just so that you can get an idea of what is possible Right, like a lot of the spreadsheets, this one's set up for a year. So put the start date of your year. It can be a, a calendar year or a financial year. And then the end date, and it will we'll show you the end date. Um, basically, it'll run for a year. Um, you can put alert, five days. How many days um, before you want a task to flag up? Uh, so in other words, if something's due, how many days before that you want it to actually show up? Um, as an alert, you can put that in there. If you want to show up on the day, just put a zero in there. And then bank holidays, it wants to track bank holidays, the spreadsheet, as far as these days of due and tasks and whatnot. Um, so you can leave this blank because it knows what all the bank holidays are in the UK, unless under very, very, very rare circumstances where one of the bank holidays changes, put the original bank holiday in with the year, it'll give you a green tick here to say, so if you, the 1st of January, for example, was a bank holiday, it goes yes. If that was then changed to the 2nd of January, from 1st of January to 2nd, now it'll take the bank holiday 1st of January out and replace it with the 2nd of January. So that's only if one of the bank holidays change, otherwise leave that. And once you've done that, you've set up for the spreadsheet. Let me go through <coughs> tab by tab. The first one is a staff list. All you need to do here is list the name of st list your staff. So list the name of the staff, all the people that you're working, that you want to monitor what whatever they're doing. Um, and you've got a list of staff names. Don't put in any duplicates. All of this will automate and update as you go along. So you really just list the names of the staff. You can sort them into alphabetical order once you've added them if you wish. Then a task list. <clears throat> this is one of the two main sheets that drive this whole spreadsheet. So you would come and number the next task. If you click on it, it gives you the next number. Um, I've got formulas in the background. So if you type in these up very quickly, just give it a second let it recalculate because what will happen is if you now come and say for example clear task 5 then the next one will reuse number 5 again so yeah what you've got here is you've got a list of tasks um, task number all unique date when the task is set short description of what that task is and then select the staff member that needs to do that task and then you can select the priority, low or high, if you want to. And then the due date, if there is a due date. If there's no due date, just leave it blank. And then last but not least, how long you think it'll take. Now, when this is a time, this isn't 6 a.m. on the 30th of September. What this is, is this is saying this task should take six hours. So if you just type in six, it thinks you're saying six days, and it'll put it as 144 hours. So you need to do the six with a little dot, zero, zero, and enter and then it'll do it as six hours so those are that's the number of hours that you think it should take that is all you as the uh, manager whoever you are would set up that's what you need to do the rest of these sections here that's what the people fill in as they're doing the tasks so then once you've done that um, I'll get to these other pages uh, in a minute but then what you need to do is you need to send this this out to all the different staff members. So the first thing you would do is sort by staff members so you get in alphabetical order. You can turn the indicator on if you want. And then what it does is it just changes the color to show you where each staff member is. So then what you would do is you'd come here, you'd copy these tasks. 
into the other spreadsheet, which is an individual, as you paste values there, it pastes it in, it knows who the staff member is that is um, uh, in question here. And then that spreadsheet can then be sent to that staff member number one. And you do another one for staff member two, three, four, so on and so forth, and send those out. So all they have are their tasks that you've set them. They can then work on those. So let's just say that week, <coughs> if this staff one spends, uh, say, two hours on that project, and two hours, uh, two hours on that project, and they say they are 20% into that one and say 20% into that one. There's no completed date yet. The, all they need to do is that week, if they take any leave or any absent days, so if they take one day's leave, they can put one in there. That's all, if they were absent any days, they can leave that blank. And then they send this one back to you. So at the end of the week, or however many, however often you, um, you, uh, do a reconciliation of all the tasks if you have a staff meet or something they can send that back to you and then what you would do with that is copy that actually if there were data further on you'd copy you would actually copy all the way to the end like that it'd copy all the way to the absent then what you do is when you bring those ones back you paste each one one below the other in this staff activity tab the yellow one so you do the first one I'm just going to go and get the other ones directly from here. Copy. Oops, wrong tab. Sorry. Staff import sheet. You'd import the one. These are going grey because it says there's tasks that are missing. But then once you collect that data, it shows you that all of that is in fact accounted for. If you go back to your task list, and we can turn the indicators off this time, so we can see. If we scroll across the right, you can see all of these have been imported. What that means is you've got all of these uh, these tasks back again. If there's an extra task on um, here, so if one of the staff have added a task, it doesn't matter. It'll transfer when you take it over. And if someone's missing, it'll stay gray. So you'll be able to see here that's, that there are tasks missing. And if you come back to the task list, you'll be able to see in this column which tasks are actually still outstanding and once you've got this page all you would do then is you can check this you can see it changes color so it tells you the positive changes it shows you negative changes if say they said they'd done two hours work and the next time they get it back they've only done an hour's work that's a negative change it shows new lines by staff it shows new lines by manager the new lines by staff will turn blue so it changes color and you can see all the different changes if the staff for example if the staff member, for example, had said, actually, you said that, that that would take 10 hours, but I'm saying that it's going to take 12 hours. See, it goes it goes green because it says that, that, one's, that one's gone up. You, they've, they've changed that one. And then if you, if you as a manager are looking at that going, no, no, that's not right. That must be 10. Then if you select the drop down, it gives you what it should be. And you can go, no, that should be 10. I want to change that back again. They're taking the mic. So that's, this will then show all the different changes that have been made, all color coordinated, so you can see exactly what your, what your staff have come back with. Once you as the manager are happy with what's going on here, then all you do is you simply come here, copy that, oops, staying on this one, go back to the task list and replace the tasks with a new one. Now you've got all of the new data on there. If you go back to here, you'll see that it's now not changing because it, it says it's exactly the same. But before you do that, I'm just going to go back. Before you actually replace that data, once the new data is in here and it's up to date and you're ready and you go, yes, that's all correct. What you can do then, and this is an added feature, so it's over and above the actual task, is you can come here to the staff activity. Now, let's say you sent these task lists out to the staff on the 7th of September, which was a Monday. And then you, the end of this period will be the 11th of September, which will be the Friday. So if you go to the 11th of September, that's the period that, we've, that we're monitoring with this task. We've got all the tasks back, all the staff times and everything are in here that they've done. We see that all the work's been updated. You can then come to the staff activity. But before it starts here, you need to get your staff names in here. 
So I didn't want to carry them over in case they switch position and then it would cause grief for you. So what I've done is if you if you got four staff like you do on your staff list, you'll see on your staff activity those four green dot in fact here it actually says a note to add staff. So you need to add these green ones. So copy those green um, blocks there, paste values here, and now you've got your list of your staff in in the right order that they are on the other page. And now this data here relates to this current week. So we said the first of seventh of September we sent out the spreadsheets. Eleven September we got them all back. You've you as a manager have gone through, made sure all of this data is correct. And now what you do is you'd simply come and copy this and paste values there. So it knows how many hours each person's worked, how many they assume to have worked, i.e based on the amount of work that they've done from the percentage that they say that they're into that job and then the leave days and absentee days so you've got that information once you've done that then you can go to your start your to your um, this list over here your staff uh, sheet import copy that paste it over the tasks so you replace those tasks with the new data that you've said is correct and now you're ready to go for the next week. So now you can send that data out the next week and actually um, update, uh, um, get the update for the following week. All you need to do then is when that one comes in, now you see you're starting on the 14th, which is the next Monday, put the following Friday's date in there and go through the same process again. But this time, don't paste it here, paste it across there. And you can keep going across. If you do this once a week, you'll have enough columns. If you do it more regularly than that, you're gonna run out of space. But at least at least once a week get all that information back and run that process as I've just shown you so that's the task list that you know this one you can keep up to date you can now go and add tasks on here to, to send out to your different staff this is the one for the import sheets of the staff coming back once you've got that information on your staff activity and you've copied it across over to your task list what you can do now is come back to your staff sheet and just clear that and then you're ready for the following week See, it shows you how many tasks should be coming in. Um, your activity report is an overall report. So anytime you can come here and go, what's the current assumed time? What's the current actual estimated time that's that's due? These are all your current assigned tasks, the average time and the average actual time. And then you can have a look over here at the completed workload per staff. So number of working days they've done five. What was the, the average per working day? time that they've assumed to have done, time that they've actually done, how many days leave as a minimum and maximum and absentee. And if you scroll down, you've got all these different graphs where you can see each of the staff members. So the average completed um, per working day. So all of them, what I've done is I've used the average assumed time as red. What the average assumed time is, which you can see there and all, all over the place, so I've usually color coded them in the red, is if you send out a project and you say this should take four hours and they've done 50 percent of the project that assumes that they should have done two hours work but they may have actually done two and a half hours work or whatever the case might be so all of the assumed are what you say they should have taken based on based on your um, the time that you've assumed it will take and based on the percentage of that that they've actually completed all of those are the assumed time and the actual time is the time that they say that they've worked on it the number of hours <clears throat> so you'll be able to see if someone says they're working a lot longer on tasks it should be taking a lot quicker or vice versa so here you can see the average completed per day you can go and see the total time over to the total over all the days over the year here you can see the number of days leave and absent days here you can see again the assumed time this is the currently assigned versus uh, um, assumed estimated um, and that's your report that you can see. So you've got those graphs. They'll keep updating as you go along. Um, you don't actually have to update anything on this page. It'll show you what period it's taking based on all of these staff activities. So really, it's a case of keeping these tasks updated, sending them out, pasting each, each person's individual sheet, sending that out to them, getting this back. When you get this back, <coughs> copying that again, pasting it into the staff import sheet, and then just checking these things, going through, making sure you're happy with everything. As I said, they'll change color accordingly. And can you, as you put them back onto this list, you can see you've got your due date. These due dates will change color when you get towards that date. 
uh, if you haven't um, actually if it's not completed and then your staff will fill in the completed date uh, what if it's ta uh, task is completed it should be at a hundred percent date then what you can do you can leave the task here and just carry on and make some more or else alternatively if you do want to highlight those tasks that are completed you can copy paste values under the archive and then come back here and clear those uh, the archive doesn't compare so the the archive they won't compare these tasks with archive and you won't you won't transfer them across but the archive is good um, if you just want to get rid of some tasks but you don't obviously want to just delete the data that you would never that you're never going to remember it at least you've got a list of the tasks that were done here as a kind of in, in the archive but they won't go towards any of the figures or show up one obviously what once once they're done but you can move them across just to clear up some space um, so yeah obviously you'll see, you'll see those warnings of, of dates when you're getting towards those dates when it should be completed uh, so that's also another reason why it's good to put the due date in because then it warns you when you when you're coming up to that date yeah that's it then update your staff activity move the, the tasks across onto your staff task list and clear that now yes that is quite a complicated process it does seem a bit overwhelming it's probably not going to be beneficial to do it this way However, as I said beforehand, everybody who's working different ways are going to need different spreadsheets. So I just wanted to show you the fact that to create a central place where you can create tasks, outsource them to people, get them all back again and collaborate them and not only do that, but actually monitor then how much work was done, all the rest of it. Um, those kind of, these kind of things are possible in Excel. It's just a case of understanding how each business works and making something. If this, if this, if you looked at this and going, yeah, that's exactly how I would do it. And that's what you want. Then by all means, do get hold of the spreadsheet. But if you need something bespoke, get in touch and let's have a chat and see what we can do for you. Thank you very much and goodbye.